Hi everyone, my name is Christina. This is the third video out of four about my process of creating explainer videos in a clean, minimal style. If you haven't seen the previous tutorials on pre-production and illustrations, I'll leave the links in the description box. Similar to the 10 simple rules of illustration that I talked about in my previous tutorial, today I would like to list my eight favorite principles slash effects when it comes to animation. Again, I would like to point out that none of these rules are a rule of thumb. They are just random principles that I follow most of the time, and I encourage you to experiment with animation so that you can create your own set of rules and principles. With that being said, here are eight principles slash effects you may want to pay attention to and learn first if you just start out with motion graphics. Graph Editor 90% of the time I actually work with the basic transform controls, such as position, rotation and scale. To my mind, it's not the movement itself or the complex fancy effect that matters and that makes the animation appealing, but the right chosen speed and right change of speed in time. Therefore, the graph editor, in my opinion, is the first thing a motion designer should learn. We will take a closer look at the graph editor in the following tutorials. Constant movement. I try to avoid long periods of stillness. Partly for this reason there are background accents and animated dashed lines in my videos. The most eye-catching part of the videos is movement as we know, so I always make sure that I have objects that are in constant motion. Even a barely noticeable movement, such as a small zoom in or out, is better than nothing. Transitions. Transition is a never randomly chosen effect. Most of the time, the way the scene disappears directly depends on the way the next scene reveals itself. This is a dance where both partners lead. For instance, when one object is moving towards the left side, the other moves from the right side as if they were connected. The movement depends on the shape. Oftentimes, the shape of the object can suggest to us how it can move. The simplest example, circles and rectangles look good when rotated, while long objects such as lines look better if they slide into the scene. Of course, this doesn't mean that the lines can never rotate. It all depends on the effect we are striving for. I'm just saying that I usually pay attention to the shape of the object and try to find the most natural way to reveal it. Bouncing As in the real world, objects can bounce when they hit the surface. This effect is also widely used in motion graphics. I rarely finish the movement with just easing and pretty often add a tiny little bounce. Track mat. Another absolutely essential trick for any kind of motion graphics. In cartoons or, say, in movies, objects or characters don't appear out of nowhere in the middle of the scene, right? Imagine someone peeking out from behind the door. We will always see the door this person is hiding the rest of his body behind. We don't have such boundaries in motion graphics. We can put an imaginary door wherever we want, and we can choose which objects will be affected by this door and which will not. Trim Path My absolute favorite effect when it comes to revealing any kind of lines. It looks like someone is drawing them right in front of our eyes. Remember, I was talking about a natural way of revealing an object based on its shape. This is another great example. Displacement in time. If several objects repeat the exact same movement in the scene, I usually offset them a little in time, so that they don't move like boring robots, unless I want them to. This always brings a bit more life to animation. This is it for today, guys. I hope you'll find these eight ideas useful. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. We'll look at more examples in the following tutorials, so subscribe if you're interested in this type of content. See you soon. Bye.